Uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about fetal radio frequency radiation exposure from cell phones and how it might affect behavior in mice. It's a study we performed uh, in this animal model. As an obstetrician, I've been very interested in what happens during pregnancy and it's now becoming very clear that various exposures to the fetus in pregnancy may result in lasting damage. That baby is programmed differently, develops differently, and may have some defects that aren't even apparent until later in life, maybe in childhood, maybe as an adult, maybe only as that individual ages. And it's our job to try and decipher what those potential insults might be and protect the next generation from this type of harm. Uh, there have been some reports about cell phone use in pregnancy that may be saying, stating that it might be harmful to the fetus. Some epidemiologic studies that in women have associated high use of a cell phone with behavioral problems in children. Um, but whenever we make these sort of associations, there are all sorts of other things that uh, may be confounding that exposure other than just the exposure to the cell phone. For example, someone could say that a person talking on the cell phone excessively is ignoring their children and that may be the explanation for these behavioral problems rather than it being a direct result of the radiation from the cell phone during pregnancy affecting the development of that baby. So we designed an animal study to test it where we would eliminate all those confounders. There would be absolutely no difference between two groups of mice, one that was exposed to the radiation from the cell phone during pregnancy and another group uh, that had no radiation exposure. And this uh, study we uh, reported in 2012 in the journal Scientific Reports. Um, to do this we took again two groups of mice. We had 33 pregnant mice uh, that were exposed to a cell phone and 42 pregnant mice that were exposed to a non-active cell phone. And we looked at the effect of this exposure on the programming, on the development of the brain in the fetus, but looked not at the fetus, but looked at the mouse after birth. So we could see what an exposure during pregnancy did to that uh, offspring later on in life as a child or as an adult. So in our study, uh, we took um, muted and silenced phones uh, that uh, are as described here. This is a pretty standard run-of-the-mill cell phone. Um, and they're muted and silenced, so there was no noise. The mice couldn't tell if the phone was on or not. There was no stress from the phone being on, background noise that was keeping them up at night. But the cell phone um, was in one group on and active, receiving a signal, and the other group cell phone was turned off and put on top of the cage. Um, right in the middle of the cage, so they were, the distance you see here uh, reflects uh, a mouse right in the middle of the cage would be about four centimeters from the phone and one at the edge of the cage is about 22 centimeters from the phone and they were free to move about the cage. Um, but again, these mice were exposed as a fetus. The moms were exposed while they were pregnant throughout the entire pregnancy and then the offspring were tested when they became um, young adults. And this is what we found. And it's a busy graph, but I'm going to summarize for you. Um, they had a, the mice that were exposed to cell phones. Again, these are the mice that were exposed while they were fetus being tested as an adult. Uh, and this looks at, over time, the various ages. They had, the mice exposed to the cell phone had decreased memory, were more likely to be hyperactive, were not anxious. They were very relaxed while they were doing this. Uh, no difference in fear. So these mice were forgetful, bouncing off the walls, and didn't have a care in the world. Very different behavior than those um, whose mothers were exposed to the cell phone that was turned off. And really completely the same in every other aspect. We can say that there's no difference other than phone being on or off between these two groups. So much more clear cut, we can really talk about cause and effect here in this animal model, which the association studies in and humans couldn't do. What does this look like? Well, uh, the closest thing we could discern uh, to this type of behavior in humans would be attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or sometimes called uh, ADHD or ADD. 
Uh, this is a, a disorder common and growing in children where they are hyperactive and they have difficulty paying attention and a tendency to act impulsively. This was, again, very similar to those hyperactive mice uh, exposed to the cell phone. Now, I want to be careful mice don't get ADHD, and we can't say that this is exactly the same, but these types of behaviors in the mice were closest to ADHD. Not only did they behave differently, but we actually in the mice could take out some of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, the area of the brain that controls these behaviors, and we looked at the electrical activity of the brain and uh, at the uh, synapses between two different brain cells, and we showed that they have a different electrical activity, that that exposure to a cell phone as a fetus permanently programmed their brain to have a different electrical activity uh, in this area that controls these types of behavior. So not only was the behavior different, but we had a real biologic basis for it, different brain development, different brain electrical activity. Good news, though, is that this uh, change in brain activity did decrease with the exposure so that uh, those who had the lowest exposure had the higher or more normal uh, synaptic uh, electrical activity. Uh, it was the ones who had the 24-hour-a-day exposure during pregnancy who were the most severely affected. So the good news is there is a dose response that lower exposures, less frequent exposure to the cell phone uh, may be beneficial. So what are the implications for people? Well, again, when we're pregnant, uh, I think it's important to keep that exposure to a minimum. Again, in our mouse model, we showed there's a dose response that lowering exposure results in fewer problems. Matter of fact, very short exposures uh, were similar to the control group. Uh, but where should we carry our cell phone? Probably not right in, as in this picture on the pregnant abdomen, not clipped to our belt next to the baby, not in a bag at our hip next to the uh, pregnant uh, abdomen. Uh, probably keep that phone move it away uh, from, the, from the pregnant abdomen. Again, so it's not affecting the baby. The one thing we do know is that radiation um, uh, effects dissipate fairly quickly with distance from the source of the radiation. So if you have your cell phone, it's sending out a signal. It's being picked up by a tower nearby. Uh, but the amount of energy correlates with the square of the distance from that energy source, the amount that's absorbed. So you move twice, a, uh, twice as far, your phone twice as far away, you're really reducing your radiation exposure by a quarter, uh, to a quarter of what it, it was. So even small, relatively small distances, moving that phone away from your body even a little bit can have a fairly profound impact on radiation exposure. So uh, what do I tell patients to do? What do I tell pregnant women to do as an obstetrician? I say, move the cell phone away from the baby. People ask me all the time, should I not be talking on my cell phone when I'm pregnant? Well, you know, moving that, if you keep your cell phone right at, at uh, your pregnant abdomen, moving it to your head is probably actually a good idea. Uh, but I think the, the bottom line is the further away uh, that the phone is from your pregnant abdomen, the better. Moving it a little bit away is a good idea, but certainly when, you, when someone's in, driving in a car, I tell them not to keep it clipped on their side. Put it on the seat next to them or the back seat. If you're in your office, put it, uh, again, not at your side, put it uh, across the room on a table. Um, when you're home, don't keep it on your person all the time when you're pregnant. Uh, place it down somewhere across the room. That type of distance will dramatically reduce the radiation exposure to the fetus. Um, and probably the safe thing to do. We don't know yet uh, whether the findings that we saw in the mice will be true in humans or exactly what level of exposure is safe. Uh, but as we just heard, we should think about the precautionary principle. In other words, better safe than sorry. We know there can be harm from exposure, and we have some relatively simple ways to mitigate that to reduce that exposure dramatically. I think just to put this in context, um, cell phones are certainly an area where we now have good data to suggest that they are affecting brain development. But what other fetal exposures are there that play a health in the next uh, generation? As a, again, a practicing obstetrician and scientist studying development, 
it's important that we better characterize all the types of exposures uh, that a fetus uh, sees to know which ones may be harmful. Many of those won't be manifest again until later in life during childhood or, or as an adult or even as we age. Uh, how many of us really know what our mother was doing when she was pregnant and whether that affected any of the uh, conditions that we may now be afflicted with or how it has affected our behavior or health. Uh, we need to know uh, more about these exposures and what they do. And there's a growing literature on this and a growing um, enterprise investigating these types of exposures for long-term consequences. So what do we have to do? Do we have to go back to living on the farm and not ever have uh, any electricity or uh, use anything that uh, might be uh, anything other than organic or natural? Well, that looks nice, but I don't think we have to go quite that far. But I do think it's going to take some careful study of which things are very harmful, which things aren't harmful, and which things may be minimally harmful where we can easily mitigate the effects. And I think coming back to cell phone exposure, that uh, the cell phone exposure effects can be relatively easily mitigated just by moving that phone away from your body when you're pregnant. Relatively easy to do. There's really no downside to doing it. So I'll end by advocating that pregnant women be aware of this and do your best to keep your cell phone away from your baby. Thanks.